We have our victor of the first game. It's our Protoss player, Felicities Virgilius. Yeah, I've got the zooms in and everything now. <laughs> <laughs> I could do this for work. All right, so spawning in the top right hand corner of Overgrowth, Ladder Edition, we have our red Zerg player. Played really well in the last game, made a couple of minor mistakes that I think... Uh, just a couple of decisions that could have tweaked a little bit different would have given would have proceeded to extend his advantage and he could have won that last game. We have Tentative Panda. Oh, well. Extractor cancel. Yep. I love that good old trick. So for anybody just joining us, not that there necessarily is. Actually there kinda of was. Now that I take that back. Uh, the first game was on Catalina. That was Virgilius. Picked that game up with a uh, kind of some nice zealots and DT harass that eventually transitioned into have him basically just hitting a timing with an Archon Stalker force. And it was very well executed, to say the least. It was. It was a good game. Yeah, Looks like he's going for the same strategy this time. The Forge, Forge is going to be seen. I saw him click on it real quick, so he knows that it's a forge going down, not a gateway. Ooh, oh, oh he's oh my. gonna be real cheeky. Oh now here's my. the thing about this. In order to hold this off as a Protoss player, you need to do a bunch of really specific things. I believe you need like two cannons and two zealots, something like that. And then you need to not invest any further defenses than that. And if you over invest, then the the Zerg player is just fine. If you under invest, you die. See, I don't know what's going on with this. So Virgilius is actually patrolling up here, trying trying to block the hatch that's supposed to go down at the natural. He's got oh, two he's cannons discovered down. It. He knows. There's <laughs> the gateway down right away. But I think he knows what to do. <laughs> the spawning pool just went down for Tenda Panda, so he's not going to have any ability to produce any Zerglings off this hatch as soon as it pops. Virgilius is going to go ahead and wall this in. He's going to leave the probe there. Uh, and I think this is just to keep the armies from joining up. He's going to go ahead and throw down a third photon cannon, which I think is an okay choice. I mean, he I went up to two photon cannons in that last game on his on his ramp for his natural. The thing that's super frustrating about this at the same time for the Protoss player is this is going to leave creep everywhere and take a while to die. So he's not going to get his natural for a bit, Ooh, or he'll cancel it. it. And, okay, he retains most of the funds. Uh, and he's going to take the gold base. Nice. Okay. This could still work out in his favor if he can get away with that. The problem is that probe down there, he's going to be hard pressed to get drones over there without it being noticed. Definitely. I mean, so this probe's actually moving out here. We see the drones come out, look for any pylons, and then they're going to very slowly kind of make their way over. He's actually going to take his natural. This yeah. probe's actually going to see this gold is expansion. Immediately checking. Immediately checking. Picks up on it right away. Oh, let's see what his response is going to be. There's a there's a there's a drone here to be like, are you going to consider making cannons? Because I don't really want you to make cannons. Yep. There's oh the crap! The drone. Oh, he's like, oh, <laughs> I've, been, I've been seen. Retreat. Fall back. Fall back, oh. team. Oh, now we have the most epic battle ever in StarCraft II history: the drone versus the probe. Who's going to win? I mean, they're they're running away from each other right now. Well, the probe's going to run home and be like, oh shit! And then the drone's going to be like, get out of my house! This is, this is real exciting, guys. Now, the problem with this is this drone is getting a little too over eager. He's going to chase him all the way to the front door. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Go home. Don't chase him up to the walls and get shot to down by the snipers. <laughs> the snipers being buildings. Meanwhile, the working on the rocks guess, here. meanwhile, the probe is like, cool, I'm not being chased anymore. Guess it's time to go back out on the map. Exactly. you gotta, you got to run home, hide real quick, and then come back later. So this now, overlord this is... positioning is actually kind of interesting. Um... As, as we look at his view, he doesn't see anything. He can't see any of the tech of this overlord. Uh, but he's like right there on the edge. I mean, if anything's built in this little area right here, it's going to get picked up immediately by that overlord. But at the same time, if there's a single stalker that comes out, stalker will be able to run up underneath the overlord and just wipe it out. Yep. And there is kind of a problem with this setup with Tentative Panda, unfortunately, that a, I'm starting to expect Virgilius to actually try and take advantage of. The creep spread is so far apart between the second and the third now that there's really going to be... It's going to be so hard to defend that base. Yeah, it's it's going to be hard to defend the base because there's a kind of a lack of creep spread. And unless 
uh, tentative panda does something crazy and goes up to like six queens, four queens, and dedicates all four of them to creep spread, he's not going to be able to connect those bases no. at least until the 12 or 13 minute mark. On the, on the upside, though, he is going to get a ton of minerals from this base. It's just very, very highly likely he's going to lose a chunk of his production at some point. Yeah, and I mean, he doesn't even have he doesn't even have Zergling Speed on the way. He doesn't have a Lair on the way. Um, he's just now gotten both of his Gas Geysers up and running. So, I mean, he can make a lot of Lings. He can make a lot of Queens. Just start his Lairs. He's not going to have much else that's going on. Speed just getting kicked off from Tender Panda, finally. You know, looking at Ver, you know, kind of looking at uh, Virgilius's build here, it looks like he's actually going for the same basic thing as last time. Lots of gateways, getting any Twilight Councils, picking up gases. So, by the way, Zealots, yes, in the in the gold. But not as successful as the previous Zealots. These Zealots actually getting caught by a bunch of lanes and slowly being surrounded and picked off. More Zealots coming into play, but we have two spine crawlers building up on the back of it, so it's just going to come down to, whoa, where are the rest of the links going? Come on, come on, guys, come back. Oh, Lots of links coming so out to hold this. And this is normally one of those things that you'd look at and like, man, that's a lot of links going down just to protect the space. But it's actually not so bad because he keeps pulling in such an incredible mineral income. Not to mention, Virgilius has effectively thrown three Nexus worth of minerals at this thing. And I'm yeah, starting to think he's not going to kill it. It's barely even. He's barely even scratched the surface. He's probably going to lose this queen, but both of these spine nope. are going to pop it about the same time. And they're going to be able to take care of those zealots. Real quick. Metabolic boost is about seven seconds away from finishing as well. Thank you, interface. <laughs> and by the way, that's really the only thing that is going to be stripped down a little bit for the Zerg player is his larva. One thing about having all that extra money is you got to spend it even faster, so he's going to need a macro hatch sooner or he's going to find himself unable to build anything. Yeah, I mean, the only way to really respond to this, uh, he's actually got the right response lined up. He's going Roach Hydra, dropping both the Roach Horn and the Hydra Den at the same time. So he'll be able to, on the next Larval Inject cycle, as soon as those are finished, just rotate his Lings out and bring in a whole bunch of Roaches and Hydras. And it's going to deal with this ground army from Virgilius pretty, pretty handily. So amazingly enough, resources lost actually higher for the Zerg player. It's pretty typical. I mean, it's supposed to show you how many Zerglings he's actually been throwing at this. But at the same time, for the Protoss player, it's, it's still not so great. Not getting the kind of work done that he'd like there. And this is a very large link count that he's built up. For what I imagine, it, he isn't really going to be relying on these guys going forward too much now that he's got the Roche Hydra tech. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully expecting this next production cycle to be uh, other than a whole bunch of drones. So it looks like he's drawn up. He thinks that he's pushed back all the pressure, which is a relatively accurate statement. I mean, there's not a whole lot else coming out. There's a couple of stalkers that are, are going to be moving around on the map. He's starting to work on getting his creep connected. Um, but I'm waiting for the Roach Hydra. Double Evo Chamber coming out. Go ahead and find those. Double Evo Chamber coming out from Tenet Panda. So it looks like he's waiting to get the upgrade started before he actually really goes hardcore into building his army up. Excellent. Um, yeah, it, this is going to be pretty frustrating potentially as soon as these DTs finish. He still has that pilot on the left side too, so it's a pretty wide exposed flank. There is an overseer being built. Yep. But where is that right now? There's one on the side of the map and one over here. He actually, I don't think he has any detection at home. Which uh, means that these DTs will be able to kill a few things at least, especially if they're spread out properly. So I did more see a spore crawler being built a minute ago. Yeah, he has one spore crawler at the uh, at the natural. So okay. the main is, there. this third right here, this gold expansion is kind of exposed to these DTs. Um, but it wouldn't be too terribly hard to have... Uh, looks like he's going to just run it in. Yeah, the DT is going to try and run it into the back, get out of the uh, detection radius, and it does actually manage to accomplish this. And now he looks like he's going up into the main base. The entire army is moving back up there to do something about this. We have an oh. observer coming out, and that observer is going to not get noticed. Okay, that's fine. DT is now in the main base trying to kill off the queen. Having some success at this, here comes the... No, it doesn't save it. But the DT is not really actually getting much damage done otherwise. Meantime, comes the Protoss army. Yep. Meantime, we have Virgilius moving out with a almost purely stalker army. He's got an immortal and a couple of sentries with 
uh, Zealot mixed in with there. Uh, I'm really hoping to see Sentries get warped in, but it looks like he's just going to warp in some more Stalkers and uh, another Zealot. Uh, this can do quite a bit of work, um, but I think that with the lack of the Sentries, um, that once all of the ground army of... There it is. So all the ground yep. army that comes running in here is going to really be able to clean this up. And I mean, he's going to really have to focus down that hatchery. And even if the hatchery goes down, he's gotten a lot of value out of that anyways. He's mined For sure. quite a bit of minerals out of these rich fields. Uh, he's got a third uh, that is up and running now. Yep. So. And you see he's just falling back and he's saying, that's fine, you can have that base. You can even have these two drones. They're going to wander back over there and get shot to death. Um, but I've got my third. I've got my army. I'm gonna sit back over here and just wait for you. Yep. Actually had a uh, actually had a spire building right here with a stalker who's standing right now. Uh, they yeah. canceled because it was on creep that was being funded uh, by an overlord. Things get the good surround doesn't really stop that from happening. A lot of the hydras have been blocked out though, and we're seeing some pretty good blinks here. Yep. And that's uh, actually really impressive with only two sentries in the army. So, I mean, there's there's actually there's a wow, lot of work done here. But I mean, it is it is it is. 2-1 stalkers against 0-0 zero, zero hydras and roaches so this is getting this is getting shreked a little bit those upgrades those upgrades are brutal man yeah. and, yep, and there's yeah the well there's the GG so Fragilis takes it 2-0